Hola, ¿cómo está? I think that might be Spanish, and I hope it wasn't rude. I know hola is hello, but I don't know what ¿cómo está? means. Okay. So if there's any Spanish speakers out there, and I have just said something inappropriate. We're so sorry. I am so sorry. So sorry. Just, Leia, do you speak Spanish? If I just, if I said, no, I shouldn't keep saying it again in case it is inappropriate. But I think hola is good. Good evening, Candice. And, hey, uh, Candace, and hey, Karen is with us oh, tonight. That's, there hello. you go. How about that? Look at that. So oh, there's present so and there's present. Well, good evening. Welcome to tonight's q and I'm Matt. This is Karen. If we haven't met before, g'day and howdy. Um, that's a strange introduction. Hello, Trish. How are you doing? It's wonderful to have you. I've seen you joining us at a few things and starting to comment and Oh, I love that. I love the fact that you're really starting to, to feel like we're family. We mm-hmm. remember you fondly all those nights up at the neighborhood center. Um, you know, when we were we were doing the and you were doing the bread, we'd always have a chat. You really are a superstar, Trish. We we love you to pieces. And Bev, trust that you are well hey, Bev. starting to get out and about a little yeah, more with great, that wonderful husband of yours. Very so exciting. Yeah, it is very, very exciting. Hey and Tanya. Aunty Tanya. Tanya. Don't we love that? Aunty Tanya had, uh, I, it looked like hog's breath um, to me, but there was certainly curly fries involved in Tanya's tea tonight. So um, there you go. I know these things. Oh, it's my, one of my favourite nephews. I was going to say my favourite nephew, Jacob, but that might have got me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I do love Jacob. He is wonderful. Right. Yeah, it's so good to have you with yeah. us, buddy. All right, we're going we're gonna to dive in. Uh, we've got around about half an hour together, so thank you for, for taking the time out to come and join us. Uh, this is a Q&A, so there's time in the comments thread to ask a few questions yeah. if you'd like to know uh, what's our favourite colour uh, or maybe something a little deeper than that and maybe something that will uh, actually um, uh, draw out a little more of our journey, our heartbeat. Uh, but we want to let you know just a couple of things right to get going. Uh, if you, we don't get a chance to answer your questions tonight, we have actually got one of the questions banked up mm. from last week. So our good friend Jasmine, is yeah. her question is kicking away tonight. We'll, yeah. we'll get to that in a sec. Uh, we want to let you know that obviously last night was living what we learned and mm-hmm. how incredible That's was right. the amazing Kate Madden. Yeah. And, um, and Beck Madden brought it home. The, the sisters-in-laws were just fantastic. And tomorrow night we start a whole new sort of segment. We've been doing communions on Thursday night. We're now going to do communion every second week. Yep. But tomorrow night, Laura Bain is going to be hosting Hello, a guest Laura. talking about stories yeah. of me. That's what we'll call it, stories of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's a little bit of a chance to glimpse into the lives of people, who how their faith Mm-hmm. Uh, how their relationship with Jesus, maybe the community uh, and the family of faith has actually helped them get through yeah. times and seasons. So stories of me tomorrow night, awesome. 7 o'clock, cannot wait. Yeah. Um, just while I'm on a roll, as if this is okay, I want to let you know we are continuing, and please tell your friends, <laughs> we're continuing to work through how we are doing re-entry. Yes. Uh, and all that is required and to, to move us back into physical spaces mm-hmm. And all that's really required, beloved, to make sure that we're not just rushing back into gathering yes. without having gained and gleaned everything that the Lord wants us yeah. to do. So I know we're keen to get back into gatherings. There are still all manner of restrictions in and about that. But mm. um, we are working. We are conscious of that. Mm. Make sure you feel free to ask us all sorts of questions about how things are going. What do we think we see? Outside of that, though, we are just we are holding things really lightly as opposed to saying this is what's going to happen on this date. So just you just uh, mm-hmm. chill with that. And then before I ask you your first yes. question, because I know you're keeping an eye on the time because so I've just prattled on. Yes. I want to pray for people. Is that okay? Yeah, so if, if, for all 11 eyes in the skies who are watching us, I just want to pray something into your living rooms right now. Okay. So, Father, I thank you for our friends who are, who are with us now in their lounge rooms, on their tablets, on their phones. I thank you for every single person who's going to watch this in the hours to come, the days to come, and ask Holy Spirit that you would just put such a beautiful, warm, and affirming presence into where they are present to right now. Father, that that's going to go, there is something different in and around me right now, and it feels like peace, and it feels like comfort, 
and it feels like truth that I am found in the middle of you, Lord Jesus. And so I just pray that deposit into every single person right now that there's going to be something just so beautifully uh, just so beautifully rain down into wherever they are watching, whenever they are watching. You're a timeless mm. God, the same yesterday, today and forever. Thank you, so thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Ah, oh, fantastic. Well, so, hello, wonderful. And oh, we've already got a question. Yeah. Daniel Hersey. Hey, Daniel. How are hey, you? Hey, Daniel. And Sophie. Yes. Um, I'd love to know what's your favourite prayer to say thank you. Uh, my favourite prayer to say thank you to the Lord is uh, 2468. Yeah. Bog in, don't wait. That's no, true. it's like um, that would be grace, saying grace for dinner. That is got to be one of my favourite prayers, seriously. Our son, from Daniel from Rwanda, hey, Daniel. is with us. G'day, yeah. Daniel. Great um, to have you here, mate. Seriously, Daniel, I just I love giving thanks to God. I think it's a great way just to, to remember, just to posture your heart, to mm -hmm. be appreciative of what we have. And when you allow yourself to, mm. to be thankful... Um, as best we can in all things, as the awesome. says, actually be thankful in all things, then it helps us have more of a heavenly perspective. So I just try just to remind myself as often as I can to be appreciative yep. Yep. Of, of, of everything it's great. that comes my way. And I just, I just want to just, uh, just applaud you, Danny, because I mm. think that's such a great question. And I think that's questions we can keep asking of each other it can be your favorite what is your favorite prayer mm. it can be actually hey dave gaskell what are you praying right mm. now as you're having coffee with isaac what are the things that you're praying yeah. for right now because right. we pick up echoes and we go oh man that's the same thing as i'm praying or yeah. that's i heard someone else say that exact same same thing mm. the other day but i'm exactly with you i think the easiest prayer that i pray is thank you thank you thank you i could pray that word thank you Thank you, thank you. I could pray that often. That is just my entire time of prayer, yeah. you know, and it can be for 15 seconds or 50 minutes just yeah. saying thank, thank you. you. And as the Lord reminds me, I see a picture of my children, I see a picture of the church, I just say thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. And, yeah. and I, and I love uh, what thank you moves me into praying more than please. Yeah. The more I say thank you, the less I say please yeah. because I'm actually receiving. What he's already given me. Yeah, that's cool. that's neat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool, um, I am okay. Evening, Great, Tilly. Daniel. And Tilly, yes. Yeah, good to have you. And the, the one and only cheeky Tim Smith from Smithton is with us. Awesome. Uh, tell you, the other thing that we're praying is we're praying, we continually pray for Annette Smith mm. because living with Tim, um, she certainly needs it. So All right, let's, let's move let's on. Let's pay back from last week, yeah. brother. Okay. All right, so... Um, our first question tonight, and I, oh, I have to keep watching the time. Our first question actually came, um, so the beautiful Jasmine asked us last week, mm -hmm. what is a season? So well, obviously we've been reflecting on some thoughts mm -hmm. uh, about season and the seasons that we're in and the seasons that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And so that's begun uh, a series of questions on how do we navigate mm -hmm. seasons and what is a season um, and more than just in the natural winter, spring, summer, autumn, you know, seasons. Um, but what is a season? And then, so Karen, if you, I can ask you that. What is a season? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to start drilling down into some particular seasons and how you navigate that practically, particularly in the area of relationships. Mm. Um, well, I mean, I suppose a season can be, as you said, season of the year, uh, season of life. Um, season of having young children, season yes. of having babies, young children, season of having teenagers, yep. season of yep. working, Study, season working. of mm. not working, season, yeah, season of something. I mean, seasons are so many different things. And then we have seasons where we feel like um, God is doing something in our mm. lives, seasons of great growth, seasons when we might feel, um, you know, like we're a little bit more dormant or God's actually just doing some really amazing things. Um, internal work mm, deep maybe work, that yeah. may not be so evident um, Ecclesiastes 1 actually says there's an appointed time for everything and there is a time for every event under heaven so there is there is a time there's an appointed time mm. for everything and I think there's an amazing tension that actually happens when change is in our midst um, and life is full of changes it's great it's you know just part of life so living in the middle of what was and yet the hope of what is to come can often be quite challenging, mm -hmm. I think, for us. And so we've got to learn that we can trust God in the middle of that and even when we don't quite see mm -hmm. where we're going or, or what's going to eventuate. Yep. Um, in fact, in Psalm 37, 34, it says, Don't be impatient for the Lord to act, 
keep travelling steadily along his pathway and in due season he will honour you with every blessing. And I think as we navigate these ups and these downs of, really of life, um, learning to trust God with that change, we've got to decide where we're going to place our trust. Mm. Um, we've got to decide where we're kind of going to anchor our soul. Mm. And, um, and I was just, as I was reflecting on that, I was thinking about um, there are lots of biblical people that actually we could look to, some who um, did trust God in the destination and some who weren't always as Great. successful. Great. But it actually just got me thinking about Naomi. And if you want to read mm. about the story of Naomi, um, it's in Ruth. In the Bible. That's confusing. And a little bit. Ruth was her daughter-in-law. But this is a woman who lost, really lost everything. Yeah. And found herself in a really um, place of, you know, uh, resentment and disappointment. And lost her husband, lost her two sons and was left with these beautiful daughter-in-laws. <laughs> Ended up travelling back to her home place of origin, Bethlehem, which mm -hmm. actually means the bread of life. Wow. Just to look, I think, just to return to her roots. To kind of go, where, where do I go to now? Mm. In, in this season and um, it's amazing because as she went back there she had to acknowledge really where she was she had to acknowledge the pain and the grief in her life mm. she then had to trust in God when she saw some provision and some opportunity yep. for God to actually allow blessing in her life and then she had to um, trust in that process and participate in that process and God blessed her life enormously it, it's it's incredible. So please do go and read it. It's just a, a beautiful mm. book in the Bible. But I think that's that's a lot of what we've got to journey through. It's it's you know acknowledging the season that we're in, acknowledging sometimes that the, the pain and the grief or um, bitterness or whatever it is that, that we face, and that sometimes in that change of season, the loss of something, the expectation of something, to move to where God would have us, but also trust in Him as our firm foundation. That's beautiful. So, yeah. That's a great. That's a great definition of season. I love that, and I think then also to to think about God in terms of time. Yeah. So it's great to see uh, Wayne Tuxworth with us again. Great to have you with us, Wayne. And Damon McDermott, uh, Damon, who actually was one of the first guys I ever asked a question of, of how do I do youth pastoring? And actually, Damon, I'll never ever forget what you said. And you said that being a pastor is knowing when to leave the ninety nine and to look after the one. And I've never forgotten that, mate. Thank you so much for letting me imprint on my heart. Mm -hmm. But I, I also love the concept of time, and you have chronos time, which is chronological time, mm -hmm. which is the times on the mm -hmm. clock or the months. And then you have, and I'm going to mispronounce this, but it's, it's kiros time. It's almost like a, a grace time. It's a time that God is saying now. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's and the season that we're in right this now. Is the, and mm -hmm. so he's saying, I have yeah. permission for you now. I have, I have grace. I have favor for you now. Or I'm wanting you to be still yes. now. And that's another rendering of this concept of season. And this is a season of now. And uh, I love the, the fact that we can break God's time down into two things. He, can, we, he, he moves in soon yeah. and suddenly. Yeah. And I would believe that he would say to us, he says, if you take care of the soons, if you are diligent, intentional and, and intimate with me in the soon, I'll take care of the suddenlies. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the seasons there, we feel like we, know, we think that they should naturally change according to what we want them to, but we... Uh, looking at the soon, 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 and soon is a tough place if it's been eight or nine years. Well, that's what Archie says. Soon can be a very long time. Yes, yeah, soon can be a very long time. But in God's time, He does soon. He does suddenly. He does chronos, chronological. He does um, that grace time. Um, but that's that's awesome. So. Hey, uh, we've got a question from Isaac. I saw that, and I'm, but I'm going to push on mm. um, because I want to keep working through the navigating thing. We did kind of talk about that, I think. Last week, where a little to start bit. In the Bible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was where to start. But he, Isaac's question was, how do you introduce the Bible oh, right. okay, to yeah, someone who has no idea? I've written it down, buddy. If we get to it, great. I don't think we are the way that I'm rambling on tonight, but I think it's a fantastic question, Isaac. Sugar. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so the second, I guess as we continue to um, work through mm -hmm. this concept of navigating season is actually one of going, okay, so how do you navigate um, tough decisions. Mm -hmm. So there's seasons when we come into that is going to be entered into. We know that we're going to start something or we know we're going to wrap something up, mm -hmm. but it takes a decision. Mm -hmm. I think some of, the, some of the, the, the things that are happening in our life right now, personally, not just me, but mm -hmm. I guess people joining us online, is happening because we have failed to make a decision. 
Mm. We failed to stop doing something or start doing something and we missed the navigating of I need to make a decision mm. right now. Mm. The, what you're talking about with, with Ruth mm. and, and, um, and sorry Naomi, mm. the, making a decision to travel back to Bethlehem, the bread of life you call that, the, the decision mm. that she had to navigate to move herself back there yes meant that her whole story changed yes that's right. um so a little more practically now a little more mm. personally now how mm. do you use your faith and what you've learned to navigate decisions wow that's a tough one isn't it it's a good one um i do a lot of praying yeah great i do a lot of praying I, there's not uh, a big decision that i would make that i don't pray about and mm. um and there are some people that i would call upon Oh, that's awesome. To, yes, to pray yes. with me. Because um, sometimes emotion, um, past experience, my humanness <laughs> could be a shock to my children. But um, that can all colour our perspective yeah. or sometimes colour our ability to see, I think, what God would say or mm -hmm. how he would direct. So I try to make sure that I'm not being led by emotion. Mm. Um or necessarily experience as much as I can allow some of those factors. It's not that I deny them. It's not that I pretend they don't exist. Yeah, that's really would be good. To, to, that would actually be not being human. But mm. it's not relying on my own understanding. The Bible says don't rely on your own understanding. Yeah, lean on yeah. God's understanding. So I try to lean on his understanding. And then I try to also call upon other people that I know I lean love that. on his understanding. Yes. To call them into the midst of that. Yeah. So you're saying you call upon people who you know will pray mm. with you. I think that's, I think that's critical. Or in, in, intercede. I mean, it might, might just be a, a text to say, look, I just need some prayer covering yep. for this. Yep. Um, and sometimes God will actually move me to that. Like, you, you need prayer covering for this. Mm -hmm. um, you need, because someone might just have a word. It might mm -hmm. just be that God's deposited them with a word and it's just that opportunity to call upon that word. It's just that confirmation. It could just be open my eyes, open mm -hmm. a door. I mean, I, I don't know, so I want to be willing. I think the other thing is also to um, go back to promises. Oh, that's really that God's good. God's given you because yeah. um, I think sometimes we can uh, diminish the importance of promises in the midst of um, change, in the so midst good. of seasons, in the midst of so unknown. Yeah, and actually, yeah. I was talking to a friend about that a few weeks ago. We were talking um, We were talking about the, the, um, the promises that sometimes seem like the B promises. You know, those, those, uh, those, those B-rated movies. Um, have you ever had one of those where, you know, you're in a place and you're in a, a service, you're, you're in a gathering with mm -hmm. amazingly spiritual people and you, you wait well, you for live promise? with me. I live with Matt. I'm very blessed. But, um, but there is that sense, you know, you have a prophetic voice come into the church or into mm. the house or into a gathering and mm. there's that mm. expectation as you're waiting for the promise and the prophetic word for someone to speak that word of life and then you get something and you feel like it's the the b promise yeah i got the, I got the know, dreg prophecy yeah you know I've, I've had i've had a couple of those where i've kind of gone is that it and what's interesting yeah, yeah what's yeah. interesting um is that god's always actually shown me that they are the promises that i've needed oh when the rubbers hit the road yes it's like that's the promise mm. you needed and i'm yeah. like that is not the b promise god doesn't give b promises does god he? doesn't give no. b promises god knows so exactly what you will need at the right mm. time so yep. it's trusting in that process yeah. so anyone out there who feels like they've been given the yeah the dud promise i want to tell you no 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 god knows what he's doing and he mm -hmm. knows that the word of life that he spoke um it's not insignificant come on yeah that's brilliant anyway i love your comment too before tilly um that was great that every yes means a no and and that is part of the decision-making process. That every time we say yes to something, it does require us saying no. And I think that's fantastic. What I particularly like about what you've said, Karen, is is actually finding people who will pray with you. Because I guess as pastoring couple, we uh, we really do yeah. get a sense sometimes. Not get a sense sometimes. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people yeah. who've come and told me what their decision is. Yes. And they don't sort of say, "Hey, I, I, I'm seeking wisdom. I'm seeking prayer. Yeah. I'm seeking input." Yeah. Here is what I've decided to do, and it's like, well, what do we, you know? I guess, bless you, um, and it makes me sad yeah. that that, yeah. that we are surrounded with really good people yeah. to to journey with us through navigating decisions mm. that you know that would pray that we get an impression of what the Lord is asking us that would ask us some challenging questions mm. that may just walk around the mm. promise and look at it from a different perspective and say, hey, have you asked this question? 
you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So um, they're, they're really good. Hey, Jazz, it's great to have you online. Just love seeing your photos yeah. of your new puppy and Zandy's birthdays and all that sort of stuff. Just thank you, thank you. May, maybe we, we started tonight answering your question from last week about uh, what is a season. Mm -hmm. So um, you're sort of joining us a little bit in. That's fine, but make sure you track back mm -hmm. and listen to Karen's definition of a season. And uh, great to have you with us too, Jodie. Hope you're feeling better. You are in the, the ups and downs of health. And we are actually praying for you, matey. So um, love that you're also leaning in. Um, all right, so decisions, uh, sorry, navigating decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's now move this into sort of a relational thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we've been married for 70, how long have we been married for? A long time. A long time? Yep. Yep. Um, uh, my beard was not like this when we first got married. Actually, I don't. Uh, no, yeah, I can't remember. No, 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 I didn't have a beard. I was That's young. Right. I was twelve or something. Um, but um, too far. Sorry. Um, what? Uh, what? How have you navigated seasons in our marriage, and and the ups and downs, the vicissitudes of marriage? And I think I was. We were talking before about. Uh, the season that we have found ourselves at the beginning of the year, we've just mm -hmm. come through. Carol's, the end of your year is just uh, is enormous mm -hmm. in terms of uh, all the exams that you play for. Moving into Carol's, we had my mum and dad come and live with us for, for three weeks, um, which was a long time. God bless you, John, Evelyn, if you're listening, we'd do it again. Um, but it was long. Mm -hmm. Then I did Youth Alive headed off to Indonesia mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks, came back for a couple of weeks. In that mm -hmm. Indonesian trip, you sent four kids off to school and navigated Noah leaving home. Three, actually, three kids. Three kids, sorry. Yeah. And starting school, Noah leaving to go to university yeah. in Launceston. I come back for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and then Nick off to India. Mm -hmm. uh, in the midst of that India trip, we obviously had COVID-19 and all of that. How are we getting home, et cetera, et cetera coming home two weeks in isolation. So I was away from you for four weeks, which honestly was easier on me than it was on you because you had to do marriage and family. Mm -hmm. Specifically about marriage, how did you navigate that? Hmm. Well, there's a bit in there. Um, first of all, in terms of having a peace about where you were mm. and what you were journeying mm. through as well, um, for me, again, it comes back to promises. It comes back to the fact that God, uh, and, and call and purpose, that God had called That's you really and purposed good. you for these missions trips. Mm -hmm. They were important. And I believe that God has said that that's an important part of who you are and what he's called you to do. So I'm never going to stand in the way of that. Mm -hmm. um, that I feel that part of my purpose in this marriage and, and, and what we declared on our, on our wedding day was that and there was three strands in this marriage that was good. you and I and there was the Holy Spirit that was going to, you know, bind us together, if you like. So there's always that understanding for me that if the Holy Spirit's in the middle of it, then I have a peace mm. and I have a mm. comfort. I don't need to um, feel uh, stress or feel overwhelmed, wondering where you are or what's happening. I really feel like God um, just had his hand upon the whole yep. thing. And not that there weren't nights where I didn't sleep as well. I did have to share my bed with Archer. Um, not that there weren't complexities, obviously, you know, our eldest son had to come home and suddenly I found myself with five kids, my beautiful son-in-law, in our house, so it was, it was quite full. Um, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's, again, it's just trusting. For me, it's just trusting and going, God, I know this is what you spoke and I know this is, I know that, you know, your word and, and, and your prayers aren't going to come mm -hmm. back void. I know mm. that this is the intention and I know the blessing. Um, that your visits were having in the places that you, yeah. you'd been. Um, and I also believe that in the midst of that, even in your isolation, God's blessing was for you to get a sense of direction and have time with him to draw alongside mm -hmm. him and not be completely distracted and overwhelmed by what was going on in COVID-19. Um, mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like that. I, I love the, I guess, the sense of navigating marriage you're talking about purpose, you're talking mm. about plans, mm. you're talking about almost a true north yeah. that with the compass which helps you navigate through the ups and downs of life mm. and we have, we've never had an up and down quite like 
the bushfires of Australia and um, and some of the fallout that came from that, not just the environmental and the relational impact of homes and families, but then the political fallout and how much how much hatred was poured out and all that sort of stuff, blame, and then yeah. and then moving into the, these ups and downs of, of COVID nineteen, and we're st- we're still not out of that yet. Um, obviously, the the Black Lives Matter um, movement swelling and growing and drawing attention to genuine oppression and yes. and and change which is needed. But we need a compass which has got a true north yeah. in that. And in our marriage, you're actually able to say that because because we've got a promise. Yeah. And because I can actually go, I know what the north is, I can continue to move around these obstacles. And even if I get a little lost, even if things get a little hard, mm. I can redirect myself. I just yeah. think that's fantastic. And, mm. and, I, and, and I really believe that Karen's been able to have this because of the years spent um, in dark, dry, difficult places, mm. still cultivating a relationship with the Lord, that um, that, that compass continues to point to true north. Mm. Um, even in even in really difficult, I think that's a fantastic answer, Karen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you're getting something out of this. Uh, you know, in fact, I would even encourage if you're watching online now, why don't you write down, "Jesus is my true north." Mm. Jesus yeah. is my true north, uh, and that we can navigate by that. We can we can do our seasons mm. with Jesus. So, Jesus is my true north. Why don't you, if you're getting a little bit bored, just listening to us, <laughs> write in, "Jesus is my true north." I've got one more question. Um, and that is, I guess, we've talked about marriage. Let's talk about kids um, and navigating them through um, difficult seasons. Navigating them. So for, for Candice, oh, there we go, Candice. We finished the sentence off. Fantastic. Isn't that tricky? Sometimes you hit return before it finishes. <laughs> Just letting you know that I'm watching. Um, but, but in terms of then navigating through the seasons of children, because some of us uh, would only have younger kids, uh, and it, we've navigated maybe through um, the the nappy phase, the bottle phase. Uh, maybe they're able to sort of climb up into the car seat themselves, but you're still there. You're still doing all the packing of lunches. Others have then navigated and, and moved through the concept of helping them choose subjects for school, uh, what sport they do or they can't play because maybe you can't do everything. Uh, helping helping them navigate good choices of friends and places that they go to. Uh, all those, all the again, the the seasons that get navigated with with children growing from being these beautiful little babes in arms, uh, through that sort of those precious years of five, six, and seven, where life is just so spectacular and days don't really have meaning, and there's months coming into the year, but it's all about when is Christmas, and uh, you know, two hundred days till Christmas, you know, um, it feels like five lifetimes. To then navigating them into university, marriage, buying houses. What have been some of the things that you've learned? Because you've been a spectacular mum to our children. I'm so honoured and blessed to have have learnt from you and watched you, um, you know, really really lead them and guide them. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you have really leaned into and anchored yourself with in that in that sense of navigation? And then we're going to pray and bounce out of here. Okay. Um Again, gee whiz, I feel like I'm getting all the tough questions. Mm -hmm. This evening, there's no one right answer to that. No. And um, it's being as consistent as I can. Yeah, wow. Being as consistent as I can in my approach, being as consistent as I can in my love for them. Mm. Um, That it goes Mm. beyond um, them doing the right thing, goes beyond them being obedient. It goes to the point of, God's purpose and plans for their lives and to always look to that place. God, what would you say mm. about this situation and what would you mm. say my role is in that? And when they're a baby and when they're little, they're so dependent upon you for so many things in so many ways, but as they grow, that's where it becomes more challenging to continue to, again, to go back to God and trust him um, as, as my first and my, and, and my ever-present yeah, great. point of need to go, okay, God, this situation has risen, this is really difficult, this mm-hmm. is really confronting for me, but I'm going to go back to what you've said. I'm going to go back to the fact that you didn't make a mistake in purposing me to be their mother. Mm. So obviously the provision is there and whether it, it, it hurts, whether it uh, causes grief, um, I've just got to trust. Mm-hmm. I've got to trust in, in that process and that consistency. Um, there you are. And yeah, 
God hasn't failed to deliver. It's not that everything's gone the way I expected. It's you haven't not failed that. me yet, Lord. It's you haven't failed that, me yet. That's but great. But God has brought everything to, um, to his good for the yeah. purposes of his plans, and they are good plans when we've continued just to journey through that mm. process. So yeah. um, consistency. consistency. But I'm just not going to take too much time. So I'm aware no, of no, 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 no. I, I, mm. I think that it's, it's a question that, we, that we're constantly faced with. I mm. think sometimes... One of the difficulties of, of navigating season with children is we fail to understand there are seasons that they grow through, and not just again, you know, is it is it cricket or is it football mm-hmm. season, but it's seasons of actually uh, having more uh, need. Mm-hmm. Other times they're growing in their independence. Other times they're testing out their own voice, um, mm-hmm. and and navigating those seasons, understanding them, which is why it's so important that we get around other parents. Mm-hmm. Who are sometimes a bit further ahead, and we've we've been yep. blessed to have those parents Absolutely. in our lives. I, I think yeah. of, of Andy and Margie Corson at times. I think of Ian and Sheila Fithy. I think yeah. of uh, you know a whole raft of fantastic parents in this church yeah. ourselves. You know, yeah. thinking of Jeff and Julie Madden and watching some of the parenting that they've done, yeah. uh, and and uh, and we've been inspired by that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love your sense of consistency, mm-hmm. and I hear and what I've seen you do is you have had some non-negotiables yeah. with our children that says, I will never uh, stop doing this and speaking the truth to you, yeah. loving you, um, and actually challenging you. And I love that. And then there's been other things that you've said, no, but now the season is finished, I will give you more space. I will yeah. enable you and empower you. And the difference between a 13-year-old and an 18-year-old all holding the same space yeah is to be consistent with the 13-year-old, now this is where things are at, a 6-year-old, now this is where things are at, mm-hmm. and then a 23-year-old, 24-year-old in, you know, in, the, in the early years of marriage, mm-hmm. these are the things that we will never stop doing. Yeah. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to assume, because of the, the character that you have, you're going to do that through the rest of their lives for the rest of their lives. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, and all my kids are breathing into a paper bag right now. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, there are things which you've given them space to get. So there are, there are non-negotiables, and then there are those things which you allow to go. And I think you've, I think you've just done that so exceptionally well. So, hey, guys, we really trust you've got something out of tonight. We've been talking about um, seasons and how to navigate them, decisions, marriage, family. Uh, and we would love to encourage you to keep sending us some questions in through these threads. Um, obviously, this goes onto YouTube now, um, and so you can find it there as well. Abundant Life Church Tasmania is how you'll do it. If you just type in Abundant Life Church, there's like 17,000 of us all over the world. Uh, so you'll be scrolling for a while. But if you do Abundant Life Church Tasmania, it will narrow it down. You can find this on YouTube. Share it with a friend. Yeah. You can watch this back over again if you, if you missed the early stages. And you can keep commenting and you can keep putting questions in there because it notifies us. We can write them down and we can answer those questions next week. So, hey, God bless you. Yeah. And I'm going to pray for you and then we'll sign off. Father, I thank you that you, uh, you never leave us, nor do you forsake us, that you are our true north, that, you, that our hope in you is the anchor for our soul, and that, Father, as we trust in you, you are our good shepherd, and you lead us beside still waters in paths of righteousness. You make us lie down in green pastures because you help us navigate that. Yeah, thank you. And so everything that Karen shared in her wisdom and and, and her journey and her experience tonight it's all echoed mm-hmm. you, your voice, your wisdom and your guidance in, in her life. And, and, and I have eaten of that fruit, Father. I'm thankful for that. I trust that the, the seeds that have been sown tonight, we water them now in your name, Lord Jesus, and we just speak over them the right things in the right time and the growth in the right season and harvest in the right season mm-hmm and that you will receive the glory and my brothers and sisters will live the life that you have dreamed of them living. And it's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, guys, God bless you. Tomorrow night, stories of me, 7 o'clock, special guest. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we'll see you Sunday morning, 9.50 for a chat, 10 o'clock for a kickoff. Special guest preachers this weekend. Yay. Yay. So true, Beth. Go love somebody. God bless you. Let's go love somebody.